Hi there, I'm Mike and I've got a ton, well, five, a ton of five of Black Series figures to get through today. Thanks to Toy Snowman for sending these to me. He, he didn't send them to me for free or anything. I, I paid for them. But it was nice of him to get them to me super early because this is a wave that uh, hasn't been in America yet. So thanks for thinking of me. And your unsolicited Star Wars picks. It's nice. I liked it. All right, let's get started straight away with Balin Skull, because he's the one that I wanted the most. And as you can see, we are now three waves deep into having plastic back in the packages. I hope that you're happy. Um, I kind of preferred PFP, but I'm not gonna can talk about it every time because I can't change anything and it is what it is. And I open my figures anyway. So let's take a look real quick at the packaging. Uh, we have, uh, you know, rest in peace, Ray Stevenson here. Honestly, terrible, tragic. They obviously have more planned for this guy, and he was so good. You realize it's all inevitable. Fall of the Jedi, rise of the Empire. It repeats again and again and again. That sort of power is fleeting. I just, I wanted to open up by saying that, that I really appreciated him in this role. I think that this is a great character. This is the mural, unfortunately on the back because of the nature of Ahsoka and how hush hush it was. This is just a generic blurb. There's nothing about the character in general. Uh, this is number nine. So Balin was, I mean, he's a dark Jedi. He's not a Sith. I don't really know. It's hard to say. But um, he, he definitely is kind of a mercenary, which was his deal there. I don't want to spend too much time talking about this. It's just a box. So let's, uh, let's get it open, right? Oh, okay. Uh, so, so here's Balin. Let's put this back here. This is him out of the box. Now, this might not be your first time seeing this. My friend Lance Speeder Luke not only has had this for a while, he developed a fix for this. And what I mean by that, unfortunately, I'm just gonna, you know, just start start talking about the bad and, and try to find the good here. But uh, unfortunately, he is way, way too short. Ray Stevenson was a tall guy. And unfortunately, it made, they made him exactly six inches tall. This is uh, Black Santin, who is seven inches tall. We got uh, Darth Malgus here. I've done a video on Darth Malgus. I have a video coming on Kersantin. I've just had things get in the way, uh, but it's a full on review, whereas this is just kind of off the top of my head kind of thing. Uh, as you can see, <laughs> Ray Stevenson should at least, he should at least be up to here on, on this. He maybe not should be seven feet tall, but he, he is uh, like a half inch too short and it really is unfortunate. But you know, one of the things that I noticed when they first announced it was I felt that the the head sculpt was pretty good. Honestly, in person, I think the head sculpt is great. I think the paint is good. Uh, my co-host on Black Series Cantina, Zach, pointed out that his beard kind of reminds him of that uh, evil Santa from the Santa Claus where it had the kind of the fake beard. And now I can't unsee that. It's just because it's plastic. Like, it's just plastic. And, and that was what I was going for in real life. And because this is plastic, yes, it looks like that. But I think, you know, when you have a sculpted beard, it's really hard to, uh, to really kind of get past that. But I love the hairstyle. I love the multi, the, the, the wash in the hair uh, to give it different colors. I, I've seen a lot of people dog on this. And, and I really, I really don't see it. I think that, that, I think it's good. We also have some nice splotching on the armor. The shoulders are on separate pieces. Of course, we do have, uh, not only do we have back and forth uh, butterfly joints, 
but it's on a ball socket, which is something that uh, a couple of figures now have had, but I haven't really paid attention to it. But this is a new, a newer thing that we haven't seen before is this ball socket joint, which I like because you can kind of go up and down as opposed to just left and right or back and forth. So that's really, really good. We also have a really nice bend right here. And I believe the hands are on a ball joint as well. Just like uh, Harris is like that. I think Merrick is like that. And then also the figurine Dan is like that. So again, we've got some really good uh, updates to sculpt. That's great. I think this figure genuinely looks fantastic. The problem is he, he's just so short. He is just so short and that's so sad. His lightsaber is almost as tall as he is. Now granted, this lightsaber is um, longer than normal, uh, to say the least. That's, that's kind of how they, they made it. Um, it does hook onto his belt here. You can, if you want to, hang his lightsaber right there. I like that. The problem with this, and this is the first thing that he's missing that I will point out is a cloak. Now he doesn't wear a cloak or robe often, but he does wear one, especially in the beginning. That in, The entrance into the hangar was really cool. And I'm really kind of bummed that, that we can't rec you know, recreate that. I know there are places that will have soft goods that you can purchase, like uh, Josh's uh, custom capes will probably have one that is probably amazing. The problem is, you know, this is a $25 figure and then you buy, what, what, like, I don't know, how much are those capes, 20 bucks? Now you've got a $45 figure and, you know, instead of being uh, kind of normal price, you're creeping up there into SH Figure Arts level. Now, you know, SH Figure Arts hasn't done this, but as soon as they do, you know he's going to come with a cape and a bunch of hands and things. And again, for a Jedi, a Jedi really should have more than one hand. Now, this has a trigger finger here. Uh, it can double as sort of a force hand, like a force choking hand. You can do that, but... Um, it's kind of it's kind of dumb. I do like that these are ball joints, and that just means that you can get them into all the positions you want without having to worry about which hinge or which wrist is hinging which way. Is how I should say that. Uh, it's just a shame that uh, he doesn't have a proper cloak, and he doesn't have alternate hands, and his lightsaber is so long. It's it's so long. <laughs> Now he does have a long one in, in the show. Like, you know, that's not unusual, but it's, is it this long? Like this is Darth Malgus's. Darth Malgus is a big boy and it's almost as long as Darth Malgus's. It's not quite. Also mine has a little bit of a bend in it. I'll have to heat that up and fix it. Um, I will say it is, as you can see here, this is red. This is more orange than this. It's not straight orange. It's not as orange as we saw in the show, but it isn't as red as this. So I feel like maybe they tried. I don't know if the color on the clear plastic was hard to really match, but um, yeah, that, that's kind of what they, they tried to do here. Uh, I didn't really talk about his legs. They're just kind of normal legs. He's got legs underneath here. Speaking of legs though, uh, like I said, Lance Peter Luke did a great video. If you want to fix Balin's height, I don't remember who it is. I'll, I'll link it in the in the downstairs area or something. If you want to see that video, he's got a figure you recommend. He recommends replacing this upper thigh with. I believe this one is, I think it's Reva, the third sister, uh, and it will it will make him taller, and uh, that kind of fixes the. I would say the major issue with the figure is just how tall he is. And I'm going to be putting some hopefully cool pose pictures while I'm talking so it's not so weird. Uh, we'll see how if I get to that or if it's just <laughs> going to be me holding the figure and talking. But that's that's Balin's skull. Let's... Oops. Oh, no. See, that's another problem is he's so long. If he falls, this is just going to be prone to breaking. I'm going to leave that in just so you can see it. I, I think it's only a matter of time before this... It's kind of droopy, it's so long. Like the weight of it, you can see is, is pulling it down. Uh, it's so embarrassing. Look at look at that, look at that bend. And then let's go to his apprentice, Shin Hati, who, whew, she is a hottie, huh? 
so that's so lame i'm so sorry i don't know why i said that if you didn't pick it up hati skull those are the names of the wolves that kind of start ragnarok i don't i don't really know how that pertains to the story but it's definitely purposefully done um i guess maybe they're starting a figurative ragnarok in the star wars universe with letting you know thrawn free spoiler alert uh she is number 10 in the Ahsoka line, I did like her character. The only my only problem with it in the show is we just needed to see more of her, uh, especially at the ending. I I enjoyed the first season, but the end of the first season kind of felt like a mid season break, if you know what I mean. Didn't feel like a complete season, <laughs> and, and like these characters, especially these two characters, they're just kind of yep, we're here on the planet, and you're like, what are you doing? I want to know. Can you show me? I want to know about the strangers like me. Why am I singing Tarzan? Anyways, let's get her out of the box. All right. Well, let me throw that away. Um, so this is Shin out of the package. Let's set up my camera to focus better on to her. Whoop, she's short. The figures you see in product images and even when they show them off on like live streams, those are those are all prototypes. Those are not final versions. They're often hand painted. They're glued together. Um, they're not they're not figures they intend anyone to really get a close look at or really hold. That's why you know they don't really mess with them that much. They're usually posed and uh, like kind of glued or or waxed onto a little stand, so they don't have to worry about you know things falling or anything like that. So um, I know they look like this should be the final product, but they're not. So oftentimes we'll get a different looking final product where they'll fix issues or sometimes they work, they look they look worse. But in this case, uh, I think it looks better. The, the face actually is pretty good. Um, the hair, I mean, at this point, she's got weird hair. She's got bangs, she's got poofy hair. It looks like she lowers her hair down onto her head like Darth Vader lowers his helmet down onto her hair. That's what she looks like in real life. I feel like that's what this looks like here. <laughs> in person, I feel like it looks fine. She has a little Padawan braid, because like, is she an, an acolyte? Is she an apprentice? Is she a Padawan? She's something more, is what Balin says in there. No, he was trained as a Jedi. You, I trained to be something more. But um, yeah, I don't know. What I do like, I like all these little accoutrement like she's got these little bracers that kind of look a little a little mandalorian a little bit which i dig same kind of thing she's got ball joint shoulders uh on the butterflies she's got a pretty good bend she has also ball joint wrists which is just it's a good uh update it's a good i like what they're doing there she also can hook her lightsaber onto here. I'm not gonna do it. You saw me do it on Balin. It's gonna pretty much look the same, but the same problems with her uh, are, are the same problems that we've had with Balin. She is missing a cloak. She's missing alternate hands. Same color lightsaber as Balin. It is more orangey than it is um, red, but it's still not as orangey as we saw in the show. But the big thing is she is again, just the wrong height now again that same video i talked about with land speeder luke he has a fix for this she's too tall is her problem balin is too short shin is too tall uh they made them roughly the same height whereas uh shin should be closer to um sabine here so if you want to i think that he made it uh i think in luke's video he swapped these legs for her or i think he's got an alternate one like uh i want to say one of the mandalorians you can make her shorter it's just a simple boil and pop again the video will be linked probably but uh, you can fix their heights the problem is you shouldn't have to right we all will acknowledge that my my thing though is while these are wrong and while i prefer for them to be right you can see they're they're the exact same height they really shouldn't be this doesn't kill it for me in the sense that I, I don't want to buy it. I want to own these. And if, you know, Hasbro ever gets around to fixing it, which I don't think they will, uh, not anytime soon anyway, but if Hasbro does ever get around to fixing it, uh, I'll probably buy those too. But for now, I've got these. They're going to be on my shelf. Yes, they're going to be the wrong size. I'm probably not going to fix them because I don't like to alter my figures 
that much. And, and that's a little bit farther out of my comfort zone than I prefer, but who knows, maybe I will. Uh, but yeah, so th that's Balin and Shin. They're not perfect. They're actually a pretty big disappointment. I like them in the show. They're probably one of the biggest highlights of the show for me in terms of just how interesting they were. What, what were they doing? Why were they going along with us? What's their exact nature, you know, to the Force and to the Jedi? Uh, obviously, he was a former Jedi. Um, she doesn't seem to have been, but he took her on as an apprentice. Like, when did that happen? I want to know more about them. I don't know if we'll ever find out. Hopefully, we will. But uh, that's Balin and Shin. And let's take a look at the next figure. Florian Fleet Commander here. He, uh, he was in Mandalorian Season 3. Not much. He did have a pretty big scene at the end of season three. You know, he's going to ram the ship and then you think, oh, he's going to sacrifice his life. Well, what's going on? And then he doesn't. Um, I'm cool with that. But but here's the thing. He's a Mandalorian. I am always down for more Mandalorians. There's a bunch of Mandalorians. They all look different. I want this. So it's from the Mandalorian here. You can see him on the side right there. Uh, we do have a little blurb for it. So it says, serving under mercenary turned privateer Axe Woves. Uh, the Mandalorian fleet commander sits at the helm of a captured Imperial light cruiser. I cannot believe that we are on number 34 in this line. That's crazy bonkers. Anyways, let's take a look at uh, the Mandalorian fleet commander here. All right, well, let's get rid of that. So this is the Mandalorian fleet commander out of the box. And unlike our lead, the previous Mandalorian that I looked at on my channel, which was pre Vizsla, this is on the new Mandalorian body. And thank God, it's so ridiculous to get a Mandalorian in the year of our Lord 2023 and have it be on a body from 2016. That's nuts. Anyways, I love this body. It's a good body. It's not perfect. Honestly, they could put any Mandalorian they want on here and I'd be happy with it. I do wish that the the knees were floating so they kind of went down here or down here instead of up here. Especially because the <laughs> these little these are missile firing things and they don't they're just gonna go straight up. You don't, you know, you know, it's not how it works. But whatever is good. Uh he does have a, a butterfly hinge, but it does only go, you know, back and forth. It does not go up and down. And his hinges are, are his wrists are hinged a specific way instead of being ball joints because this isn't a new body. This is a recolor of a previous body. In fact, it's a recolor of the Death Watch Mando body here. That's This is the original body that it came with. He does not have a removable helmet. He's just a guy. He looks cool. Now, it's not 100% the same. As you can see on the bottom, uh, he's got different shins. Um, he's got... The same everything else. No, his, his chest is different. This chest looks more like uh, Django or Boba Fett's. The shoulders are also different. They're differently shaped. So he's not a straight, the overlay here is different because that's what this is, is an overlay. So I'm sure that the torso underneath is the same. The uh, the arms themselves and, and the upper upper thighs are the same, but the lower legs and the overlay and obviously the head are all different. He does come with the jetpack. It's this, it's not the same jetpack. This is more of the jetpack that like Boba Fett came with. So it's got movable little jets and it is compatible. It looks like it's compatible with the flame effect down here. And these are movable. This top looks like it's movable. Uh, and if you want to, I know uh, layered creations or other people like that have little jet or uh, launch effects that you can put up there. So, so he's shooting a missile. Uh, he comes with a blaster. The problem is he does not have a place for it. And that kind of sucks because I feel like he should. He should have a place for his blaster to holster it when he is not going to fire it. I think the, the face looks pretty good. I don't really remember what the guy looks like, but I'm assuming he just looks like this. Uh, they did a pretty good job. And then, of course, he has his helmet. This is very similar problem. Oh, this is all kinds of misshapen. And that is just an issue with the trays. I know I know there are people out there, they'll die for this plastic. But this is all kinds of warped. And I can fix it. 
It's just a little bit of hot water can, can fix it right up. But it's the same problem we have with, this is Sabine's helmet. I don't know what happened here, but I feel like they're, they're not shaping their helmets right anymore. This is Axe Woves, and his helmet is better. His helmet is bigger. It comes down further. I don't know. This is what the helmet should look like. Unless the helmet is a little loose too, so it's not great. So Axe Woves is, is more of kind of a straight repaint of the, the Death Watch Mando, whereas this one is an actual kind of change, and I like that. I like that it's different enough. So I think once I fix the little little helmet here, I think that will that will make it better. But I do I like the colors. I like the shape. It's one of my favorite bodies in the whole line. Um, like I said, it's it's already aged a little bit because of the newer uh, features like hinged ball joints on the shoulders and on the uh, hands. But other than that, and, and also newer troopers are coming with like floating knees, so they can be up or down or in the middle, so you have more control over it, but I'm, I'm not gonna let that take away from, from how cool this is, and I just knocked everything over because uh, I was looking through my camera. That is the Mandalorian Fleet Commander. Let's move on to the next figure. And that is another figure I've been looking forward to. This is R5D4. I want every droid on this body, just just so we're on the same page, this is the new R2-D2 body size scale, not the old one. So it's larger. He is from the Mandalorian since R5-D4 did get a, a pretty good role in the show. He rode around on the uh, on Din's fighter as his droid pilot, which is neat. He had a little tussle with some mouse droids in the, the last episode or so. So I'm, I'm down to, to get him. I'm, I'm, I obviously I did. The problem here is they're releasing this and they have Pipeline announced a Target exclusive version of this that also comes with pit droids. If you're watching this right now, you may not want to buy this. I was, I was really trying to resist it, but I want R5-D4 so badly that I really, I had to get it. That being said, I'm probably gonna get the pit droid version too, because you, you can't go wrong with having too many droids, especially pit droids. So I'm probably gonna get that, but I had to get this too. Obviously, I also wanted to talk about it. So we've got him on the side. We've got on the back, it says a battered astromech droid R5-D4 has been a long operational, uh, has had a long operational span bouncing around the various owners on Tatooine for decades. Now he resides on Docking Bay 35 of Moss Isley Spaceport in Pelimoto's employ. So nice little name drop to Pelimoto. Maybe we'll get a figure of her, although I don't love her as a character. She did grow on me. Anyways, let's get him out of the box, shall we? I don't know if that worked as well as the previous ones. It was really hard to hold on these tiny little bits. I have always had a soft spot for R5-D4 here. I, uh, I really like him. I also owned the Power of the Force 2 version that had like guns on the side and the whole thing split open. He turned into a little rocket launcher. So this is the R2. So like I said, they are the same size or the same base body. Like the legs are the same. The body is the same. Everything's molded the same. Just like on the uh, original toy, like the, the older version of these, the difference basically is just the coloring and then also the, uh, the head, but they have the little gimmick. They are missing their rolling wheels that the old one came with, speaking of which, I've got that right here. So you can see the size difference there between the old one and the new one. This is properly scaled. This is too small. This is though, I will say, uh, this was a GameStop exclusive. I like that he's a little dirtier. I feel like this is too clean. Maybe he's a little cleaner since he's hanging out with uh, Pelimoto. Also, I don't like that these are kind of gray instead of painted silver like these. It's also weird that on the larger one, these top things are smaller than on, 
on this one. I also kind of like the, um, I like the antenna on this one a little bit better, but everything other than that is great. Like this had a little thing where the doors could open and these little hands could pop out like this. Um, and then the, uh, the third leg was tied to turning the head around, which I absolutely hate. It's the worst. You don't want a gimmick tied to movement like that. I and mean, it's not a, it's not a children's toy for babies. It's a grown, well, it's not a grown toy, but it's, you know, something that I prefer having as an adult man. Um, but uh, you could just pull it out, which is, which is great. I like that. I think that looks good. Glad that he can just pull that out. You don't have to spin the head around. I do wish that they had wheels on here. I wish that the paint was just a little bit more accurate or dirty. I feel like that's, you know, for the size, he's smaller and he's just kind of a redo of this. I feel like it could have been in the budget, but I'm still glad to have him on on the shelf. Maybe the one we get from um, the, the Target 3-pack will have more dirt on him, which is, you know, my preference. So, so just like the R2-D2, these sides open up and he's got these little, he's got these little accessories that go on there. So we've got, we've got this thing. I don't know what it is. I don't know what any of this is, but it's got some gold paint on it, which is nice. The rest is just colored plastic. We've got this, which looks like some kind of maybe, looks like a taser maybe, the taser that R2 used to tase some people. It's got this, which is another kind of tool. They're just tools. I don't know what tools these are, guys. I don't, I've got no idea, but they are tools. Uh, I know this is a scomp link. This is what they use to, you know, insert themselves into a computer. And then it's also got this thing, which I think is the welder, but maybe not. There's also somewhere, full disclosure, I, uh, I lost this little piece for a second. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I think this is a saw. I think it's just a little saw, but it's so tiny. It wins the award for one of the tiniest accessories of, of them all, but they just kind of fit in these little holes inside here. But uh, all of these go inside of these little holes that are on the side there. Uh, they, he also, unlike the original one, these little guys now open. I don't know what their purpose is, but R2's opened on screen, you know, when he kind of had malfunctions. So it's cool that they did that with here. But the big thing with these figures uh, this new mold is that the, the head pops up. Now the purpose for that is that all these little guys can fit right into these little holes, these little grooves. And, and it is meant for storage. They snap right in. You can just close it up and now all your tiny little accessories are stored inside of him. So you don't have to worry about losing them. They're right there. And I can feel that little one already wiggling around in there. <laughs> this has been a long time talking about this little droid. He comes with a lot of stuff. I like it. Um, I'm a little worried about losing or breaking these little pieces, but for the most part, I am looking for, I'm glad that I have him, but maybe if you're watching this and you don't own him yet, maybe wait for the target version with the, uh, the pit droids. I don't know if he'll come with the same stuff. I don't know if he'll have the same deco. But um, you get pit droids, and and so far there's only been one of those in a, a four pack at Disneyland. So, you know, wait for that probably. And last, and kind of least, we've got Star Killer. This is the mass wide release of Star Killer. I did get the Hasbro Pulse version, but I haven't had a moment to talk about the Hasbro Pulse version. Uh, so if you've been waiting to get Starkiller but didn't want to spend $110 and get Starkiller with two Stormtroopers and just a bunch of extra stuff, this is what it is. It is gaming greats, but like all you know, recently released gaming greats, this is not GameStop exclusive. This is a wide mass release, part of the main line. You can probably get them. I'm not saying you can't get them at GameStop, but you don't, you don't have to. You don't have to get them from GameStop, I guess. The big thing is that he just comes with a lightsaber, no extra hands, no extra heads. Obviously, no stormtroopers, no base, things like that. We have this nice little 
uh, mural image of him on the, on the back there, on the side there. And then we have Galen Merrick, codenamed Starkiller, was a Force-sensitive human who became Darth Vader's apprentice during the Galactic Empire's reign. So that is basically the, the game, The Force Unleashed, in a nutshell, which is what this is from. And then it has a fun little Legends logo here that I don't think we've ever seen before, uh, which is kind of neat. But let's get him open so we can look at him. All right. <laughs> let's get that out of here. So, so here we have Starkiller, a.k.a. Galen Merrick. He's a cool idea. You know, he's Darth Vader's secret apprentice. He does have the new shoulders, which is neat. And he does not have ball jointed hands, but he does have ball jointed shoulders, which is just kind of, that is neat. Let me bring out the, uh, my other star killer here. They are the exact same. This one comes with this lightsaber. Uh, he has a spot for the lightsaber to plug in right here. But fun fact, he also has four spots back here that you can plug in other lightsabers. Like, you know, when he, when he kills a Jedi, he takes their lightsaber, kind of plugs it in. A little, little mini Grievous there, which I dig. I dig that a lot. This hand sucks. It is molded in a way so where it kind of holds the lightsaber. Kind of but it's meant to be like he's using the force at the same time, like he's doing a force push slash holding the lightsaber. He does that in the games. Ahsoka does that in the Clone Wars. Like they, they use the force and hold the lightsaber, but because of the weird open hand, it does tend to fall off very, very easily. This is why I bought a second one. What I want is a Galen who can use a different head. Maybe this screaming head now, because why not? And we have all these different hands. Maybe I want Galen to have force lightning hands like this. He also, the, the, the big one came with this cool little stand. So maybe, maybe uh, if I put him on the stand here. And now if I want to, I can have a light side Galen. We'll put him, uh, we'll put, we'll put this moving one on here. Since the, you know, the, the Hasbro Pulse one came with so much stuff and there's still a third head I haven't even used. It's kind of a stern one. I don't love this one. I think the screaming head's good. I know some people don't like it. This one's the best easily. But as you can see, we've got these open hands that are kind of forced hands. We've got this kind of just relaxed hand which I, I just more figures need to come with. I don't, I don't know how else to say this, but like I've been collecting Mythic Legions and Cosmic Legions and recently they've been coming with extra hands that are just open and relaxed like this. And I, I just love it so much. So obviously he came with like lightning hands. This is like a force effect hand, like a force push hand. So I've got, you know, they, they gave me all of these things that I could use, and I have a, a regular, oop, a regular blue one as well. They gave me all these things I can use. I only had one Galen Merrick Star Killer to kind of mess around with. So now I've got two. I can display it more ways at once, and I dig that. I actually really do kind of dig the uh, the electricity. I know it's a little droopy now. But uh, I don't know, maybe lightning kind of droops. It arcs. Why not? I dig it. I like it. Plus, I got two more stormtroopers, you know, for my uh, for my collection. So there's Star Killer. I've got more ways to display him. That's that's what I wanted. <laughs> that's what I wanted. This is the wave. This is the full wave of Black Series figures. There's five here. If I just if I had to give you just a raw score of this wave as a whole. It's gonna be like a five out of 10, maybe a six out of 10. I'm happy with most of them for the most part. They're all, they've all got issues. The Balin and Hati, wrong sizes, obviously, and, and they're missing stuff. I bought him, I already had him. I This is my second Star Killer. It's hard to be excited about these when they're so wrong. It's hard to be excited about this when I've got a better version already and I bought this just to display it. And I could honestly buy a third and still have a unique Star Killer because he came with so many extra accessories and heads 
and hands and not have the same figure here or the previous one. That's cool. I like the R5-D4, but there's a better one coming out. So it's hard to get excited for this one when I know one with pit droids and hopefully a better pink deco uh, is coming out. And the Mandalorian fleet uh, commander, he's probably my favorite one, just raw, just as it is. But even he has problems, like not having a holster sucks. I have to fix his warped helmet. It's not a big deal once I fix it, it's fine. But the fact that I have to is annoying. So it's just, it's really hard to be excited. I got these from Toy Snowman and you know, by he had shipped out that day, I got them Monday. Now also on Monday, I got this guy right here. This guy is from Four Horsemen. They're part of their Cosmic Legions line. His name is Canox Vol. I was way more excited to pick Canox up here and get him out of the box. I opened him up immediately. These have sat in their box for a full day and then I just opened them today on, like a day later, because I just, it was hard to be excited. I knew what I was getting with all of them, but Canox here was just so cool, so unique. And I actually didn't even think that. When they announced this guy a year and a half ago or so, I immediately was like, no, I don't care about him. I don't love the cyborg. I thought he was a lot bigger than he was and he's expensive, he's 60 bucks. But after getting the rest of the wave and playing around with them and seeing people post pictures of this guy, specifically this picture from Jay Hernandez, I was like, yeah, okay, I, I need this figure. I want this figure. I didn't want it and now I do want it and now I have it and I love it. He comes with an alternate head. He comes with two alternate hands. You know, he's got so much paint and detailing and deco on him. He's got a mixture of these little soft goods and molded rubber. He's got hoses that are removable. There's just so much you can do with this guy. He's so cool that I was just, I was so looking forward to getting him. I opened him up immediately and yes, he's pricey. 60 bucks is a lot to ask for, but I feel like he's worth every penny. Whereas $25 for this, and I feel like I should be getting more. In fact, I would pay more. I would pay up to $30, $35 if that meant that we could get proper deco, proper scaling, uh, proper accessories, alternate hands, robes, you know, things like that. Things they should have come with. Things to make me happier with them out of the box. I am not a poor person. I will pay money for something that makes me happy. Right now, I'm buying these Black Series figures. No, I'm not stopping Black Series, but I'm not a completionist anymore like I was. And part of that is because I just don't love the line like I used to. And part of that is because while there are some great improvements like ball jointed shoulders, ball jointed hands, uh, the face prints and stuff are all great. There's a lot of deco missing. There's accessories missing. And, and that makes me not enjoy the line as much. In fact, I actually, this right here, $110, sure. Would I, do I wish I could have bought it with all the accessories, but without the stormtroopers? Sure. But at the same time, stormtroopers are built army builders. I'll take them. And I like that you could recreate the box, but I would have paid $60 for this guy, the three heads, all the different, you know, accoutrement and accessories that he came with, because I think that it's worth that. He's got a lot of great deco on him. He's got a lot of that detail that I like. He's, I love having all the accessories. I love having the options. That's what I want out of a toy line. That's what Star Wars isn't giving me, and it is what Cosmic Legions and Mythic Legions have been giving me. So do you want me to review Cosmic or Mythic Legions on my channel? Let me know. I probably will at some point, but I'm not gonna stop Black Series. Black Series is still like my main thing. I still love it. I still have a podcast about Black Series. Black Series Cantina, go listen to it. We just had Frederick's figures on, he's great. We've talked to people, we talked to Gregory Titus. We've had a lot of great guests on there. I am I like Star Wars, I like the Black Series, but, but man, do I love Mythic Legions and Cosmic Legions right now. In fact, I just cleared off a bunch of shelf space 
so I can make room for more Black uh, uh, Mythic Legions and Cosmic Legions. So there's that. Um, anyways, that's it. That's all I've got. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Do you think I'm uh, spot on with these figures? Do you think I wasn't? Do you think I was too nice? I think I was too harsh? I don't think that's true. But let me know. I do love to read and respond to comments when I can. I'd also love to take a moment and thank these people on screen for supporting me on Patreon. Uh, just in general, not, not any tears anymore because I just, I only, I don't make all the videos I used to make now. So I just kind of grouped everyone together. So thanks for supporting me on Patreon. I love you guys. I love, if you're just watching this, thanks for getting this far. It means a lot to me that you're doing that. And I, I will talk to you later. Bye.